So this is one of my favorite hunts of all time and it took place back in the fall of 2014. Uh, one thing that's changed a lot over the years for me as a hunter um, is going from really just seeking after the kill uh, to seeking after the process and the experience. Um, and that's really what my, my hunting has morphed into over the years is really enjoying uh, the process of working with the horses, putting a camp into the backcountry. Uh, and what's cool about this hunt is this was really early in that process of really learning how to use horses, how to hunt the backcountry effectively. Uh, so it's fun to look back on. And this is one of the most unique hunts I've ever been on. Uh, in the sense that I actually got to take this mule deer shooting off of my horse's back. I haven't done it before then or since, but it's still a hunt to cherish and I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Going. Headed in do some business on some muleys. Hopefully we have a little luck. All right, well, we got all set up, as you can see. Got the uh, cots lined up. This is rustic. This is log home living at its finest. This is mule deer hunting like Jeremiah Johnson would have done it. Except we have jalapeno cheese smokies from South Hill Meat Locker in Bonners Ferry, Idaho. We're not sponsored by them, but I do love their meat. Anyway, we uh, got a good fire going here. It's getting nice and warm in our makeshift wall tent, and um, we're gonna have some smokies for dinner. What kind of smokies are those, Justin? These are mule deer smokies, actually. How fitting. Stretch it out. Got a lot of season. Like to a nice one. Good morning. Time to get rolling, dude. It's gonna get light on us. Time to rise and shine. Fire in the hole! Well, just getting ready to go. I'm about to have a little bit of breakfast, have some Eggo blueberry waffles cooking up. Nice little fire going, getting warm in here. Hey, Lego, my Eggo. Well, it's a foggy morning out, but the rain has stopped. We were nice and dry and warm last night, so we're ready to go. Um, just gotten light here. We're gonna we're right in the mule deer, so we're just gonna ride through a couple of nice um, openings and cuts, and then probably get on a ridge and uh, get up high and look for some bucks if this stuff clears out. So.
don't know what saw like this all the way up last year. I saw it was like this, a couple of spots. Right when I first saw this buck, I shot him, but the camera wasn't rolling. So what you're seeing here are the second two shots on this buck off of my horse's back. I don't know why you didn't see him. I looked over and thought he was an elk standing there. Dude, that thing's a stud. Let's go get him. <gasps> I just shot a buck off a of hoodie. Brother! the first shot, did you? No. Oh my gosh. Dude, I just shot a buck off a of hoodie. Dude, that thing's a stud, Colton. I know. I looked over. I don't know why you didn't see it. I looked over. It looked like an elk standing there. I couldn't see through my scope. It fogged up. Oh, nice. Right there. Wait. Video. Got him? Yep. Good buck, dude. Oh, 170s. Yeah. Oh, easy. Oh my god. What a solid deer. Dude. Oh my goodness. I just killed a stud, brother. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Do you see that thing? Heavy. Yes. Oh, off the horses. Are you kidding me? That is what we've been doing this for. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh my gosh, brother. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh my gosh. Dude, just think we almost went home yesterday. Perseverance. I said we started slow, but we we're gonna finish fast. That was fast. Shooting off the horse ain't nothing but a thing, brother. All right. Well, we did it again. I don't know how else to put it, really. I'm actually in awe right now. We weren't gonna come up here last night. We were not gonna camp out. We had a train wreck with the horses. We lost all of our gear. Threw them all in, drove all the way to the bottom of the drainage. We're headed home and just couldn't take it. We came up here, uh, got our camp set up finally at 11 o'clock last night. We started eating dinner, uh, got the horses all taken care of. And when we woke up this morning, fog. Thick, nasty, white, impenetrable, low visibility fog. And so we couldn't see anything. So we decided we were gonna try and ride and uh, just see if we could see anything, wait for the fog to burn off. And we started going up a old uh, pack trail on this big ridge up here and been riding for about two hours and horses were breathing heavy. We just came up over the steepest part of it, get up on this little plateau and this buck here is looking over his shoulder at us. I didn't even see him. I was looking for the trail and Colton spotted him. 
Justin, Justin, Justin. Big buck, he was just sitting there looking. Didn't even know what the heck we were. Pulled up and shot him. We didn't get the first shot on video. Colton asked me to wait. I probably could have waited, but you know what? I wanted to kill this thing so bad. He's got unreal mass. Just look at this palmation and these forks. About six inches around up in here. Just a beautiful deer. He's only about 22 inches wide, but man, talk about mature. He's five and a half on his bases. Carries his mass all the way through. Just a heavy, mature, beautiful four-point buck. Could not be happier. Shot at 30 yards off the horses. There's something about the backcountry, about being out in God's creation, about the mountains, the animals, uh, that really draws us all as hunters out there and holds us. And I think anybody that's hunted for any length of time understands what I'm talking about. There's just something about, about being out in the mountains that really stops us in our tracks that draws us out away from where we are and the everyday life and it draws us out there and we yearn for it we we want to be out in this creation and that's because as we as we look at this creation what we understand is that this creation is a reflection of the creator and that's god and, and we see how good it is we see how magnificent it is and the bible tells us that all of creation proclaims God's existence. And so when we go out there, we just we want more of it. We want to be out there more. We want to be closer to it. We want to be surrounded by this creation. But what we really desire deep down is to be close to God. Many people say, I, when I'm out in the mountains, I feel closer to God. And that's because this creation is literally proclaiming His existence. When you're out there, it is speaking to you, saying, God exists. You need God. He wants a relationship with you. This is all His. You, you are supposed to belong to God. And we hear that whisper. That whisper of creation proclaiming God's existence. And it draws us out there. And God is drawing us. And we desire to respond. That's why we go back time and time again. And Acts 17 tells us that God's not far off from any of us. He's close. And he wants us to find him. So as you go out into creation and as you go out into the world, and you're looking for that fulfillment, I want you to remember that fulfillment only comes through relationship with Jesus Christ and in his presence is fullness of joy.